everyone, it's Jess. Welcome back to another video. If you're new here, I do plant videos, home decor, and DIY. So if that's something that you're into, hit the subscribe button and also hit the bell so that you'll be notified anytime that I upload. So today, you guys, I'm going to be doing some repotting and I'm also going to be giving you some care tips on how to care for my favorite plant genus, which is Aglaonema. So I have this Chinese evergreen here. The common name for aglaonemas is Chinese evergreen. This one is called Cutlass. I picked this up from my local garden center for 12 bucks. And I'm just gonna be repotting this and talking to you guys a little bit on how I care for these types of plants. Okay, so I'm gonna be doing the repotting portion first. I've got my pot here. This is a six inch pot. This is a four inch, so I'm just gonna up this up one size and if you all have been watching me for a while, you know that I line all of my pots with this mesh. This is just some regular mesh that I pick up from Walmart. Very inexpensive. And I just use this to line the bottom of my pots so that no soil falls out and also no bugs can crawl up the drain holes. So just cut out a little circle there. Toss that to the side. Put this in the bottom. For my soil mixture, I'm going to be using some leftover miracle Grow. This is just a regular potting mix, and I also won't be adding any type of amendments to this soil. Aglaonemas are not particular on what kind of soil you use. They just like a well-draining mix. Um, normally, I would add some additional perlite to add drainage to this soil, but I'm not going to be doing that today. So fill this up about three quarters of the way and then I like to make a little bit of a well in the center. And then just pop the plant out. It's got pretty good roots on it. So I'm not gonna do too much teasing. I am gonna remove just the top portion of the old soil. Stick this down in here. And then backfill. And I normally like to leave about an inch of lip around the top of the pot just for watering purposes so that no soil spills out when I'm watering. Pack it down nice and tight and then I will also be top dressing this plant as well. I just don't have it here with me but here we go. Fresh new plant all repotted. I'm just going to water it in and I'll be back with some care tips. Okay so I'm back, cleaned off the table watered this in, gave it a fresh new pot, and this is what we're looking like. So I think it looks really, really cute. This again is the Aglaonema Cutlass, the newest addition to my Aglaonema collection. If you guys have not seen that video, I'll leave a link up in the cards and also put a link down in the description box for you to check that out. Okay, so let's get into some of the care tips on how I take care of these gorgeous plants. Again, the scientific name is Aglaonema. The common name is Chinese Evergreen. These plants are native to the tropic and subtropics of Asia and New Guinea. And y'all, there are actually like 20 to 22 different species of Aglaonema, but there are hundreds, like well over 500 different varieties of Aglaonema. So I love, love, love this genus of plants, mainly because they're so easy care. They have lush foliage, so many different color variations. I just pulled a couple to show you guys. I know I've already done a whole haul and collection video. So again, check that out if you haven't seen it, but I just pulled a couple to show you guys and kind of talk about the differences on how I take care of these. So again, just in general, these plants are very easy to care for. They are actually plants that were used to bring luck in Asia. So they're normally ornamental plants that are used in offices. They're used in homes. They're used in public restaurants and places just because they're so easy to adapt to whatever conditions you put them in. They can go anywhere from low light to bright indirect light. So I'm gonna talk about lighting first. So when it comes to lighting, aglaonemas in general can tolerate anywhere from low light to bright indirect light. It just really depends on what type or what variety 
you're caring for. Um, so for example, the more green varieties such as this Cutlass here, as well as the Aglaonema Silver Bay, which is a more common variety, the more green foliage can tolerate darker light requirements. So if you have a low light or very dim light in your house, this is what you want to go for is something that has more of a solid green but it can still have like the variegation and the speckled foliage on the leaves just more green foliage can tolerate low light now when you get into the more colorful and brighter varieties such as this one here this is the pink passion this one has speckled foliage and it also has color to the undersides of its leaves um, and this one here as well this is the sparkling sarah this one has pink variegation going down its leaves as well as pink stems. So the more colorful the aglaonema, the more light that it needs um, just for that variegation to really pop. So it really depends again on the variety of aglaonema as far as how much light it would require. As far as soil goes, again, I kind of touched on that when I did the repotting, as long as it's a well draining mix, it should be fine. Aglaonemas are not particular on having super well draining mix. You don't have to add orchid bark and charcoal and all kinds of stuff to make it super well draining, but you do want it to drain thoroughly and also retain a lot of moisture. Next up is watering. So as far as watering, aglaonemas actually like to dry out. So you want to make sure that your plant is drying out, not completely, but mostly, so if you stick your finger down about an inch or two into the soil and feel that it is dry, then you know you need to water your plants. Me personally, I lift the pot, and if it feels light to me, that's when I know to water my plants. I also have most of my plants on a cycle. I water on the 1st and the 15th of every month. Just makes it easy for me. Um, but yeah, just make sure that you're watering it thoroughly. Make sure it has dried out, I would say maybe about halfway down to the soil. Water it thoroughly, make sure it's running out of the drain holes to give it a full saturation. As far as fertilizer goes, I fertilize my aglaonemas during the growing season once a month. I do give them a dosage of just regular miracle Grow all-purpose fertilizer. Any all-purpose fertilizer or even well-balanced fertilizer such as a 10-10-10 um, works fine for these guys. Just make sure you're diluting it with water because these do get brown tips um, and can burn if you over fertilize. So I fertilize once a month during the growing season. In the off season, I don't fertilize at all. Next up is temperature. So aglaonemas in my area, I am in growing zone 7B here in North Carolina. Aglaonemas are not hardy in my area. Aglaonemas typically like to stay above 65 um, but they are prone to damage right when it hits around the 60 or below area. So if you experience temperatures lower than that, you'll definitely want to bring these indoors. Um, if you're keeping them as a house plant or office plant or whatever, just as a general rule of thumb, if you're comfortable, your plants will be comfortable. Humidity. Um, the best thing to me about aglaonemas is they do not require high humidity at all, you guys. So these are very, very well adaptable to pretty much any conditions that you have. If you have a drier home, they will do fine. So they don't require high humidity. However, if you do prefer to run a humidifier or you can also set them on a tray of pebbles, fill it with water, and when that water evaporates, it creates its own little humid environment around the plant, of course it'll thrive better the more humidity that you give it, but it's not required for aglaonemas. As far as growth rates, aglaonemas are pretty slow growing. Um, again, it depends on the variety. So I do have some that actually grow like monsters, like my red Siam aglaonema, that thing, it just took off. Same thing with my Emerald Gem. The more light that you have them in, typically they will grow a little bit better, but they are moderately slow growers. Um, they do also bloom. The blooms look very similar to peace lily staff blooms. Um, typically people cut the blooms off just because it does preserve or prolong the life of your plant. Um, and they do also take a lot of energy from the plant, but I actually prefer to leave my blooms on. They don't bother me. I actually like how they look um, and they last quite a long time. And then once they start to die out, I just 
snip them off, but they do bloom. As far as propagation goes, aglaonemas can be propagated by division. You can also take cuttings and root them in water. So either way, they grow very fast. As far as pests go, I have not had any pests on any of my aglaonemas, y'all. At this point, I am at about 20 plus aglaonemas in my collection and I have never had a single pest on any of my aglaonemas, fortunately. So I personally have not had that problem. I have read that they are prone to getting mealybugs, spider mites, thrips, your typical houseplant pests. And I do have a video on how you can debug your plants. I'll leave that in the description box for you guys to check that out as well. But pests typically are not an issue on Chinese evergreens. Okay, and then last up is toxicity. According to the ASPCA, aglaonemas, aka Chinese evergreens, are toxic to both cats and dogs. So if you have little fur babies, just make sure to keep an eye on them when they're around. Try to keep your plants up high, maybe up on a shelf where they can't get to them. Um, but they are toxic to cats and dogs. Um, some varieties do produce a fruit that I read that is also toxic to pets. So just keep an eye if you have little fur babies around. However, aglaonemas are wonderful air purifiers. So if that is a concern of yours, definitely pick up one of these plants. They are super, super easy. There's so many different varieties. There's so many different names of the varieties, you guys, but I just, this is almost a foolproof plant. Um, one other thing that I did want to mention that I didn't really put a topic or header about is sometimes aglaonemas, when you repot them, they will go through transplant shock. Um, which may cause them to yellow. Sometimes they do also brown. Um, aglaonemas are also prone to getting a fungus, which is called black spot, um, and your leaves will turn mushy and just disgusting. They stink. It's, it's really bad, you guys. Um, one thing that I found to help combat that is I, of course, cut off the effective leaves, and then I do a drench of hydrogen peroxide diluted in water, and that seems to alleviate the fungus problem for me. So yeah, that is pretty much it. I think I covered everything. I covered lighting, soil, fertilizer, toxicity. I think that's everything. Yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned a little bit more about Chinese evergreens. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those down in the comments below. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and engaging in my content. I love you guys. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe for more, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.